Hello my friends and welcome once more to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself, Amata. Hope you guys are keeping well. I'm here as always with the latest news from the tech and gaming world as of the 3rd of December. Yes, it is indeed advent calendar time. For anyone who does celebrate Christmas, I'm curious, let me know if you have your Christmas decorations up yet. We don't actually hear at mine, but we probably will be putting them up soon. But I'm not here to talk about that, I'm here to talk about the latest news, of course, from the tech and gaming world as I've already said. We're going to begin things with a little update from the initiative. Now for those of you who are scratching your head going, what is the initiative? It's that quadruple A studio that was announced a little while ago from Microsoft and I will say quadruple A, I hate that, I hate every part of that, but we don't really know what this team has been working on. But there's perhaps a little bit of an update here thanks to the most recent episode of the Xbox Era podcast and of course you will find that link below and they do discuss in this what they've heard about the initiative and according to them their first project is going to be episodic and they actually compare it to the series Black Mirror in that there'll be several standalone stories and such that will exist within a loosely connected universe. And according to Nick Baker, who is an insider, he said, quote, All those episodes of Black Mirror are linked to each other. They take place within the same universe. When I talked about the Initiatives game, I'm not saying it's exactly like Black Mirror, but it has that Black Mirror-like aspect to it. It's just stuff we're hearing. I know the world ep word episodic has been thrown around. And further in the podcast, the hosts also said that they don't think the internet is going to react very well to whatever this project is. Maybe that's just because of the episodic nature. That could very well be the case. It could be a million different reasons. Now, I will say the idea of episodic game that isn't technically like, say, like The Walking Dead, for instance, where each chapter follows on from the last and you have to play the last to know what the hell's going on and obviously your choices have ramifications, blah, blah, blah. But it being a more loosely connected universe where they're sort of vaguely related, but, related, but not really, I do feel that could potentially be quite interesting. But episodic games, they're a... They're a bit divisive, they were around like all, all over the place for a while, but now they've kind of died down a bit, so we'll have to see, of course. But we're going to move on now to some tech news, we're going to start off with the RX 6900 XT. So this time around we have some uh, brand new benchmarks for the top end RDNA 2 card, and these were discovered by Tom Apisank over on Twitter, and you can of course find his tweet linked in the description below this video. And these particular bit benchmarks are Geekbench OpenCL, and we see full fat Navi 21 XTX model, 80 compute nits, and of course 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. Now the thing we want to focus more on here is the OpenCL score, which you can see at the top of the benchmark results, on, you know, just on top of Sobel, Canny, Stereo Matching, and so on. And we can see it has a score of 169,779, and that makes it roughly 12% faster than the 6800 XT and 35% faster than the RX 6800 Vanilla. And also, speaking to some information that we were given, Paul was given some gaming performance information for the 6900 XT. Unfortunately, we can't talk specifics because the source asked us not to, but the too long didn't read is that the 6900 XT is either on par or slightly ahead of the RTX 3090 if SAM is enabled. With it disabled, it does trail slightly behind on the 3090, but it of course depends on the game or application and does pull ahead in some cases. As for the ray tracing performance, according to the information that we have been given, uh, the performance is a little better than the uh, um, sorry the 6800 XT, but not by a huge amount. Now, of course, we are just days away from the launch of the RX 6900 XT, so we're going to see lots and lots of juicy information about this top-end card and exactly what it has in store for us in terms of you know ray tracing and when AMD finally releases their DLSS um, alternative. It's going to be an interesting time for sure. I think we can all agree that the start of this next generation of graphics has not been boring. <laughs> Especially with all the shortages, it's not been boring. <laughs> but speaking of shortages, let's move on to the RTX 30 series. 
Now, as I just said in the previous topic, it's no secret that getting hold of the new tech that's been releasing the last couple of months has been difficult, to put it mildly, with massive shortages affecting both the RTX 30 series, RX 6000 series, and of course the next-gen consoles as well. And we've seen the RTX 3060 Ti, which of course just came out, and if you did miss our review, you will find it linked below as well. Uh, go check it out if you're curious if it's worth uh, purchasing when they're stock available again. And even that car just absolutely flew off the shelves. Now obviously, the problems are not just related to GPU wafer supply, but also components and substraints as well. And we were given a little bit of light on this situation thanks to NVIDIA's Chief Financial Officer, Colette Kress who took part in the Credit Suisse 24th Annual Technology Conference and she did talk a little bit about the kind of supply issues that they are facing. And she said, quote, We do have supply constraints and our supply cons constraints, excuse me, do expand past what we are seeing in terms of wafers and silicon. But yes, some constraints are in substrates and components. We continue to work during the quarter on our supply and believe that the demand will probably exceed supply in Q4 for overall gaming. Now, obviously, this is not the first time that NVIDIA have been sort of open and said that they're not expecting the supply issues to ease up anytime soon. Jensen Huang said it previously that we're going to be seeing the demand outstripping supply throughout the rest of the year. And here we say, see it said again by Colette Kress, the CFO. Now, obviously, this year is almost finished, but if you're hoping to get a you know cheeky order in before Christmas or whatever, you're going to have to be on your A-game and have that F5 key ready to hammer because the supply issues are going to continue for some time. And it's going to take a while for all these issues to straighten out. Obviously, there's multiple different factors coming all together. You know, the world situation and everything that's happening is obviously really making the situation so much worse. And it's going to be a little while before it resolves. I wish I had better news for you guys. I wish I could say that, you know, Santa's going to give us all an RTX 3080 for Christmas, but I don't think that's going to happen. But we're going to move over from the world of graphics to the world of processors as we have an update for Intel's Rocket Lake. And once again, we have Tom Appysack on Twitter to thank for this. And of course, as usual, find him linked below alongside all the other links that I have used for sources for this particular video. And this time around, we have yet another Geekbench result. And we can see some very, very interesting findings here. So obviously, 8 cores, 16 threads. 3.41 gigahertz base frequency and a max frequency of 4.98 so just like just a kiss a hair away from that 5 gigahertz mark now of course you may recall that there was rumors a little while ago that rocket lake is able to hit 5.3 gigahertz and there was also quite frankly crazy rumors that could go up all, all the way up to 5.5 but i don't really believe that to be honest because well at the end of the day rocket lake is a backport of sunny cove and just to remind you paul was the first to leak that rocket lake was indeed a backport but let's talk the actual score we can see here we see a score of 1645 for the single core and 9783 for the multi core. And we do see this particular result pulling ahead of the 10900K, which of course is the current flagship for Intel, but only in single threaded. In the multi threaded test, the 10900K is still ahead. Now, one very, very important thing to keep in mind with those benchmarks is that I'm pretty damn sure, like 90% sure, that it's an engineering sample, which means that there is a very good chance that the clocks will be higher for retail. So these are not the final specs that we will see for the processor that customers can actually purchase. Now with the assumption that they're higher, it will probably be enough to take the gaming crown from Zen 3, specifically the 5800X, but will still lose pretty heavily on multi-thread. Now, of course, the main negative of Rocket Lake, based on what we've been hearing, is the higher power consumption and heat output. So if it's taking, for example, 50% more power and putting out way more heat, is it actually going to be worth it compared to Ryzen 5000? Obviously, that we'll have to wait and see. But it's also important to keep in mind that I'm just talking about gaming here when I'm talking about Rocket Lake S beating out the 5800X. When it comes to rendering tasks, Ryzen 5000 is still going to reign supreme. As I said earlier, 
Rocket Lake is still going to lose heavily on multi-thread based on what we've seen. Anyway, we're going to finish up with an update on one of my favourite things, Elden Ring. Yep, the mysterious Elden Ring which we have yet to see hide nor hair of ever since it was revealed at E3 last year. Now as you all know, I'm sure, the Game Awards is coming up soon, it's next week I believe, next weekend. And that is the last hope that we all have for seeing anything from Elden Ring this year. Every time there's been a gaming event, we're all there like, are we going to see it? Are we going to? Are we going to? And of course the answer has always been like, N -uh. but we have a new hope, my friends. As kind of funny as Imran Khan, who has been um, who has been correct, excuse me, in the past, suggested that we might indeed see that Elden Ring coming soon, or at least he's seen hints that we might see it soon. But let me quote him instead of phrasing things very confusingly. He said, quote, There are some reasonable hints that an Elden Ring trailer is coming soon, I think. I follow some Bandai Namco marketing people on Twitter who have been retweeting, and in some cases unretweeting, some TGA stuff in weirdly coy ways. And that's not all. Lance McDonald, who you may, most likely will know as the person behind the Bloodborne 60fps uh, PS4 Pro patch, did state that, well, apparently Elden Ring is almost finished and From Software is waiting in the wings to show it publicly. And according to Lance, this information comes from contractors who are supposedly working on the game. So, very, very interesting stuff. I would like to believe that the game is almost finished. That would mean that we'd see some gameplay soon, and very well possible that we could see it at the Game Awards. If we don't see it at the Game Awards, we probably won't see it until just before it comes out, or a couple of months before it comes out. It's tough to say, of course. I really, 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 really hope that we see a new trailer. I was actually thinking about uh, streaming the Game Awards live, like we did with the Zen 3 and I'd need 2 reveals, but I just saw today that it starts at 11.30pm at night, and I'm sorry, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not staying up till 4 in the morning. I will find out in the morning if we saw Elden Ring. So hopefully we do, guys. Fingers and toes crossed because I'm I'm just looking forward to it. It looks really cool. It's from software and I love from software. So let's all send out some 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 blesses. Get your bless emotes out, guys, and maybe we'll see Elden Ring in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, in a week, sorry, I should say. <laughs> Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, the support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.